but we'll see what All happens. Right. Here we go, getting right into Shaper Select. What's it going to be? It is Gladiator Mara. Yep. Aw. <laughs> I got so excited. <laughs> and Gladiator Ferris as well. So, pretty much what we expected here. And for those watching, this will be a best two out of three games match. The score is zero to zero. At the moment, it's single elimination, so... Neither team has any advantage going into it. The winner of this match, not the winner of this game, but the winner of this match will walk away with the aforementioned prizes, the waypoint prizes, and the mouse pads, along with gaming mice from Logitech and $200. 200 smackers. And the... The claim that they can say they are the best team in Dawngate as of this weekend. And that they this won weekend. It. Yeah, and that Wait. they won the, the first ever Dawngate tournament played on the tournament realm. Ooh. That accomplishment will stand the test of time because from oh. this point forward, every single tournament will be on the tournament realm. So this is history in the making right now. Everybody going to go down in the yeah, annals of history. history. Yeah. <laughs> I may even include it in the history of competitive Dawngate. We'll see. Oh my god. <laughs> you haven't done one of those in a while. Yeah, no, I like to spread them out. I, li I like to let history unfold and, and, and see how it shakes out. Okay. You I wonder sense. if we're going to see the uh, the provolone cheese start from SG here, <laughs> where they we're contest the see... enemy buff with four people. We'll probably see provolone cheese from SG, or, well, we might even see, like, I don't know, a Gouda from Bob. But I think SG uh, typically goes for level 1 invades with certain compositions, and I don't think this composition is one of them. But you never know. So, here we go. The grand finals of the Six Note Invitational 6 Inferno are underway. And right off the bat, you can see both teams making a beeline for that bottom lane. Could they potentially... Meet in the murder bush. We haven't seen it too many times. I think SG's just gonna look to burst down one target. 30 seconds until nice scouting spawn. ward coming up from Scrag. Bob being very patient here. They anticipated that SG might wrap around and go past them in the bush, but no such luck. Cus saw that ward, and he's pinging it for the rest of his team. Minions have spawned. So some nice, deep offensive wards here for both sides. It looks like there will not be any level one action. No ski this time, yep. Now, SG has that power buff of Bob's warded, but I don't think they can do much about it. Yeah, I think both teams went pretty even in this level one. They both used the ward in the same bush bottom, and then each team got like one deep ward, so it's a pretty fairly even level one. Both junglers with fast clears and high sustain. I anticipate that we'll see both of them doing a full clear the first time around. I would not be surprised if we see Cus to do this uh, second fish camp and then hit level 3 and try to gank right after it. Interesting. That is one benefit to starting the power camp area and that's why a lot of junglers prefer it now. It's not because it gives, or it's not because of the power buff essentially, but it's because you get level 3 with the power buff, which is a lot Gosh. of really damage. Yep, only one small camp near the armor buff. Ooh. Scrag is thinking about it, but SG sniffed him out there. And now Scrag will be a little behind. Yeah, I really thought he did finish that second camp to hit level 3, but it looks like he's just going to skip it and just go straight to his haste buff. And Cus actually skipped his haste buff. He wanted to put himself in position to potentially counter gang Scrag. 
So, some unusual starts here for the junglers. Yeah, they had that ward uh, in the haste area, and they had that ward at the power area, so they knew that they knew where Strag was starting, they knew if he was leaving the game. And right now, Scrag, pretty far behind Cuss here. Oh, real, I was about to say that he's behind because Cuss is about to take his third buff, Scrag only on his second. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because he went for that weird gank in the beginning yeah. there. I just saw Cuss getting to, I'm sorry, I saw. Uh, Volek getting to, uh, Scrag getting to his haste buff before Moya got to hers, and I'm like, oh, so I guess he is ahead somehow, but nope, Moya has a whole buff on him, so. Yeah, they both did some wacky stuff, a very interesting start to this game here. Both teams being very, very careful, knowing how good the other one is, they're not going to do anything reckless, yeah, nothing and if they do, they'll pay for it. I think both teams are going to kind of wait till right about this point, when they hit level 6, and that's something you can just start getting a little explosive. I think this game is going to be all about that first jungler gank. Yep. As you see, Moya is positioned up here in the top lane as camera takes us up here. Meanwhile, Scrag is doing uh, his buff right now. Ooh, but the vision comes out. They they see Cus, but he doesn't want to bolt underneath the binding and get walled off. So a nice job. Tulse had a sixth sense. He, he had a feeling he had to check that bush, and he fires off to the... the uh, the vision cone, the vision shell, just to make sure. Yeah, I'm not crazy about that gank attempt from Cuss there. He could have just done pigs and gotten six and had a much stronger gank. I don't think he would have gotten six from the pigs, but I also think it was a little pointless because he... That gank would have involved Pulse having to walk up to that bush almost. Oh, like, you're right. He did not get six from the pigs. Just barely. One more jungle monster will do it for Cuss and then he will be level six. I'm really hoping Otsi is, uh, gets that level 6 and makes some roam and makes a play happen because in order to really make a Ferris pick work it, worth it, you can't just like have a Ferris free farm, you also have to feed the Ferris so he becomes you know that terrifying one-shot beast. But if Otsi doesn't start roaming because I don't think he's going to get kills from this lane, that's probably not going to happen. He's trying to make it happen. Acid's getting chunked here and both Otsi and 50 are full health. So we can say that Bob is comfortably winning that lane, whereas the reverse is true top lane. We're going to see Cuss hit level 6 off of this uh, Augur camp that he's taking, and he's probably going to try to dive top lane after Cuss is known for doing these crazy level 6 dives. Uh, I'm not so sure if SG will go for it this game, but it's always a possibility. And Scrag, one monster off of he's 6 learning. himself. Oh! But the timing of the wave doesn't work out. Scrag didn't want to dive that hard. And wow! Cuss actually used his ult and did not get a kill there. I don't know if he whiffed it. No, it looks like Arborist he hit it and Arborist blinked, yeah. Or yeah, I don't know if he hit, did he actually hit the ult initially? Uh, I have no idea. Yeah, either way, got the blink out of Arborist, so that's going to be worth it. But they were really hoping for a kill. Both teams playing relatively safe this game, playing smart. Uh, this isn't one of those games where, you know, one jungler gets behind the other snowballs of control. This is a very even, step-by-step -step game, really slow-paced, and it's all gonna revolve around whoever gets picked off first, or whoever or whoever wins the next team fight, because that's gonna be uh, this parasite that's up right now. Yep. Second round of buffs are up. Both junglers will return to their respective domains and take all the camps, presumably. Although that's not what we saw initially. They stopped partway through their rotations to gank and counter gank. I feel like Tulse is... Yeah, I was about to say. He has to go back after that. He's way too low to go back into lane. Although, honestly, consider doing Paris soon. They've got more level sixes right now than uh, Bob does. Bob's technicians are still level five, and they just back. So but SG Bob is the one pinging the parasite, oh. and now SG pings it. So now they know the jig is up. As Tulse also here to provide support on this parasite. SG, are they going to try for the steal? Will Cus go for it? No. The so that was a really good rotation by Bob. They saw both lane's technicians back, and they saw Ronan back. 
as soon as they saw that, they just started ping pinging Terra. And as soon as they were completely sure that they were back in base, they just rotated, got it for free. So really, really nice job by Scrag there. Who at the time actually out-leveled Cus by one level. Cus was only level 6, so Scrag had the better Vanquish as well in case Cus tried to contest. So Bob, getting a slight advantage for themselves early on, still no kills though. And this is, I think, the longest we've seen a game go without a kill. It's a testament to the skill of these teams. Ooh, really Riptide nice. comes out from Taiga, knocking up three members of Bob, but they're able to prevent the gank. But here's the Avalanche now in response. The Chaos right. Shell will take out Virus, and now Taiga on the run, but he blinks over the empowered King of Masks, but he lands the finale, but there won't be enough to take out Taiga. That was such nice play from Arborist there. It looked like they just wanted to disengage, and he turned around and got the kill. Yeah, Arborist is telling the team, guys, what are you doing? You can do this. And just manning up and dropping that ultimate. Smart camera briefly uh, showing us Taiga in base there. Mm -hmm. has been destroyed. Wanted to highlight him a little after that great ult. But yeah, now Bob is up both a kill and a parasite, so the advantage lies with them. And they took the binding off of that. So everything going Bob's way early on. And as we discussed, I think that's important for their morale. Ooh, the landfall lands onto Ferris. Well, the, oh, but the, and the the flashback doesn't take him as far as he wants, but he does use his blink to escape. His flashback actually got interrupted by an was? auto from Acid. Yeah. Wow. Because the first part of Ferris's flashback is actually a dash, not a teleport, so it can be interrupted by CC. So nice job by Acid's to auto there and force the blink out of Otzi. But again, that's a Moya ult getting a blink instead of a kill. So good, but not great. Yeah, you really want those landfalls to start paying off at some point. I mean, it's nice to force the blink, but if you're not able to gank again and the blink comes off cooldown again, um, it's just more, you know, wasted effort for SG, and, that, and that's going to start to build, maybe frustrate them a little bit. Yeah, yeah this game especially... this is something that SG is not used to. It's more of something that Bob would do. They like controlled games, they're confident in their team fighting. Well, SG has won a lot of these games off of early leads. Scrag eats the title prison in aggressive progress. Gate the Damnation comes up, and Amaranth does a nice wave rider to escape trouble while Evaniscus flies in on dibs for support. You can tell how tense this game is it right is. now. As soon as a fight starts, people try to back out as fast as possible if they think they're at a disadvantage. Right now, there's very few objectives on the map. There's no buffs, there's no wells, para was taken not too long ago. So right now everybody's just pushing out lanes and just roaming around the map trying to get any pick they can. Bob has way more ults up here and they are going to siege this bottom binding. Taiga has his ult, but he's very far away. And you can see again, 4v4 in the bottom lane while the carries Split push top. I belong here. You can see Taiga lurking, lurking in the bush here, looking for an opportunity to engage when she can. There's the Riptide, comes down onto Scrag, but 50 throws out a finale, and uh, SG doesn't take the bait. Yeah, even though that finale whiffed, I like that from 50. I like that he put that there to put stop the pursuit the from SG. I think it was a smart ult. Uh, again, both teams just incredibly scared. We saw uh, Taiga go for the opportunity, and as soon as it didn't look like it was going to work out for SG, both teams just kind of walked away. Neither team wants to make the first mistake here because they know it's going to lead into whoever gets that second parasite. Yeah. Any small mistake can snowball into a huge lead for either team. That's what happens when both teams are so good. It takes one little slip up and that's it. I would say that Bob does have the item advantage right now, so they might have a better time enforcing this next parasite. Especially since the Amaranth ult might be down when it comes in. Level-wise, things looking fairly even, perhaps a slight edge to SG. <gasps> Civilized. 
So Tulse just backed his pain, uh, which makes Bob incredibly strong. So they probably oh. really want to go for this pair of second. They might get a pin oh, on Gus right wow. now. Oh, wow. Gus having used Landfall to avoid the collapse from Bob. Yeah. So that's an off the board for SG. And title, uh, the Riptide from Amrith is still down too for another 40 seconds. So SG only has three ultimates, right? None of them are for their engages. Yeah, and we've seen SG play fast and loose with those at the tournament, and it kept paying off for them until just now. And Cus had to blow that ult to get away. He would have died otherwise. If Bob waits this next 10 minutes or 10 seconds for a calm ultimate to come up, they will have all five of their ultimates against SG's three at this next Parasite fight. And if they, really, if Ronin was just backing right now top, if he really does back after this wave, it's a perfect opportunity for Bob to go for the Parasite. Scrag is lurking in the area. He's keeping eyes on Parasite the entire time. Meanwhile, Varian is up there farming the fish camp. Dibs gets a ward for Surreal Gaming on Parasite, so they will know now. They're not Bob's not gonna be able to sneak it. And that big alt window has passed for the most part. SG has their ults up, with the exception of Cuss on Moya. Emerald are... is up right now, yeah. So Bob really does need to be careful to not get engaged on when they're split. Tulse got a crit you know, off an auto attack onto Rust, doing a big chunk of damage. Yeah, it looks like Tulse is generally getting the better of that 1v1 top lane. And yeah, now they're going to try and clear away some of those well workers, draw some of the SG heat up to the top lane, top lane to uh, deal with Varian and Volik. Meanwhile, we've got a 3 on 2 down at bottom as Moya goes for her haste buff, but Bob sees her. So Wells are going to unlock in 20 seconds, and this Parasite is going to evolve. This Parasite is going to be a lot harder to take down than the current one, and Cus actually wants to start it right now so it doesn't evolve, so they can burn it down quickly, because they saw Scrag back. I don't know how this is going to turn out for SG. If Bob can group up quick enough, they can turn this really easily. I, Bob does not want to give this up. It would be huge for SG. They're going in, there's the finale and the avalanche, but Spirit gets the Parasite, but a lot of damage coming down onto Spirit. Meanwhile, the Riptide knocks up three members of Bob. Final Protocol Doll goes down, but Firos is still alive. Tulse trying to kite the Mara. They take Mara out, so only one player dies, and well, two die. It looked like just Volok's mere presence scared Dibs into death. I really wish our Barris <laughs> dropped his ult earlier. If he dropped his, uh, I don't know the name of the ultimate. If he dropped the Sakari ult right on top of SG while they, they were taking Parasite, that was a guaranteed five-man stun, and that fight could have done so much better for Bob. Still, I'm going to go ahead and say that Bob got the better end of the exchange. I oh, don't definitely. think that that Parasite was worth it for SG, since a big part of that Parasite is... Oh, actually, I'm thinking of level two Parasite. I was about to say a big part of it is the buff. They didn't even get the buff. So they only got the Vim, and they lost a lot of people there. So uh, Bob no about coming it. out big time. No doubt about it, but if they did uh, get those extra two kills, I think it could have been really big for them. So, momentum in Bob's favor here. This is the morale boost they needed. The question is, can they turn it into a win? And historically, prior to the past few weeks, what always happened when these two teams played against each other was that if Bob got ahead early, they would win the game. They would not throw. That was the story of this rivalry. And now they're in that position again. Yeah, Bob likes to say a lot of the time when they lose to SG, it's not SG outplaying them, it's Bob outplaying themselves. That's the way they put it. So I think Bob is trying to play a lot safer this game and try to... Uh, they know they're really strong in team fighting, so they're just going to try to stick to that. They're going to just try to play safe, not throw, and take the game little by little. Yep, and they have some nice comfort picks here. Tulse on Varian, 50 on Calm. And Faris is actually Otzi's most played Shaper. Yeah, Otzi has definitely played a lot of Faris. Uh, up until recently, he did, he wasn't really a big fan of it in competitive play, but I'm glad he's decided to try it again, and he's been playing it with relative success this game. Scrag needs to be careful here. He's Otzi's going very deep. Here. Scrag walking over a ward. I'm not sure if he realizes, and SG is paying it, but nothing comes of it. Yeah, it looks like Bob is going to try to maybe form in push this top lane. Both sides with a pain here, which I like. 
against Volok and Dibs, respectively, and both sides with at least one duress, Bob with two. Yeah, that definitely is one of the benefits of having two range supports, you get to do that double duress. Uh, I mean, you can't build a duress on Mara, I guess, but your ultimate basically is a duress for each person on the enemy team. So right now, Bob has four balls capped against SG, and that's a lot of extra Vim income coming in for them. Right yeah, now, SG Bob... needs to make picks with their composition. Yeah, Bob is firmly in command of this game here. And SG's style is to be aggressive and to make plays, and it's going to be a lot harder for them to do that when they're behind. Zero kills for SG. And you can see that their items are not the best. Rust. They're taking up with farm, more or less, but I think Glad on a. or farm on a Glad Mara is nowhere near as strong, you know, as farm on a Glad Ferris. Oh, the tailwind. They're gonna give chase, but a nice blitz from Acids is going to avoid the follow up from the rest of Bob. Yeah, as soon as he saw that auto attack coming in, he had to blitz because that duress would have definitely caught him out. So Scrag showing SG that they have that bush warded. So Tulsa's already at three items. He is really strong right now. I really like this uh pick up from Tulsa get a 1v1 theorist right now. A spirit player has been slain. Oh, let's move the camera over to that. Uh, Gibbs uh, uh, the top too late. <laughs> yeah, uh Tulsa ended ended Ronin uh very quickly. Uh, Dibs tried to fly up to support, but was a little too little too late. Tulsa had already finished Ronin. This is a Tulsa literally a faster than the camera. Yes. Destroyed. A really good rotation. At 50, as soon as he saw this, he came up so they could two man push down this finding as fast as possible. And Otzi went in for a kill and drew the Amaranth ult out of Taiga. So now, SG will have a very difficult time dealing with this parasite. Yeah, they don't have the engage for the Amaranth ult. Good call on Arborist to wall this off. I wish he did a little later, but I think Bob has a really good positional advantage right now. And I think SG is just going to get this one up now. So there you have it. The second Parasite of the game for Bob. Is that the second or the third? I can't even remember. Uh, second one. First one was, remember, at 14 minutes, cut stopper from evolving. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Okay, so, second Parasite of the game for Bob. So that's two Parasites, five kills, and three bindings. SG has no Parasites, no kills, and no bindings. However, they are going to be able to recap two of these wells, and both of Bob's wells are open. So Bob is going to try to force fights around these wells so they don't give them up and let SG get uh, the global gold going back in their favor. It looks like One Bob wants to five-man siege here with the Parasite buff. <laughs> One thing I like about Tulsa's build this game is that he did not go uh, he did not go the Ruin route. Uh, I really like Resonance mainly because of the Mastery, and I feel like Mastery builds give uh, Rage Carry a lot more early damage. They're giving chase with Tailwind, but SG uses a Tailwind of their own to disengage. Yeah, and I like that they chose bottom lane to Siege. That was the lane with the more exposed binding. And Bob kind of just slow rolling SG this game. Take a look. Not a ton of action, just a very controlled, measured approach here. Yeah, and I, th I think it's working out for Bob. I mean, obviously it is. They've got the advantage right now. They're up in the kills. They've got the parasite control. Um, these fights are happening the way they want them to. And, that, you know, it's not super crazy chaos where everyone get, uh, kind of gets caught up in these team fights. They are, you know, they're, they're, they're playing it very close to the vest. They are they're in a very, like, like you said, measured approach. Yep. Bob in a great position here. However, they no longer have Parabuff. 
So if SG wants to make something happen, if they want to aggressively make a play near their own binding, now is the time. Cus does have his ult. Low controlled siege of this binding. Yep. With two teams of this caliber that can capitalize on a mistake really well, you have to, you know, take as much caution as you can when going for a tower like this. Yeah. Oh, oh Tyga wow. goes in big with the Riptide and the Avalanche comes down. Damnation ticking away. McScrag's gonna drop. Landfall picks up one member, but he brings him back far enough that he's able to blink away. King of Mass gets out. Armorous drops. Tulse, though, is now here trying to fire away. 50 and Ozi are trying to allow them to give chase. Chaos Shell is ticking away. SG is super low. They've got to stay away from Tulse. Celerity Shell picks up Amaranth. Now 50 trying to zone three members of SG, but he gets snared by the duress, and they're trying to finish 50, but Tulse also back in this fight, and they all have to run. Tailwind gets used. King of Mass trying to avoid him. Tulse picks him up. He's going to try and pick up acids. He will with the Celerity Shell, and Bob is able to four for one, uh, four for one trade uh, with SG and come out even further ahead. Tulse wow. is so strong right now, and he yeah. cleaned up that fight so well. Was he bot lane trying to split push? He was not yeah. there at the beginning. That's why SG went in. Cus got to be careful here. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Spies, this next buy is going to be huge. He's got enough to finish his dominance and get another tier 2 item. Yeah. He's going to have over 60% crit damage. There is 60% crit rate with a dominant. So this next Terra is also gonna go down so quickly. Yeah, pretty, pretty wild. Arborous, uh, full on haste Sakari for the most part, save for a pestilence. Really, really strong. That was just crazy play by Tulse there. Like you guys said, he was bottom lane, and that's why Taiga went in with the blink ult. But when he got there, he pretty much cleaned up SG by himself. Just perfect mechanics, landing every Q. Just phenomenal carry play coming out of Tulse, who, as we mentioned earlier, recently just switched back to carry after playing support for months. Yeah, 50 also saved his Tailwind for the end there. I don't know if it came up off a of cooldown or how that worked out, but either way, a beautiful Tailwind allowed him and he and Tulse to uh, continue to give chase and pick up two more kills on the SG players. Averis giving a quick shout out to the Hype Train members. I know, I think Captain Romantic or another Hype Train member liked stacking motions onto Sakari when they got a lead because it let her chase people down with relative ease. So. It's if it's haste stacking screen. and you're talking about hype train, it's probably Captain Romantic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tulse now with four and a half legendary items, six and oh with 247 farm at 25 minutes into the game. Has captured a well. He is just absolutely massive, and he's on a carry that has a lot of mobility, so he's not even vulnerable in fights. It's going to be very, very difficult for SG to deal with him. And Cuss in the enemy jungle, but meanwhile, Bob is just going to take their third parasite of the game. Cuss will try to contest, pinging it. He's going to try to ult over the wall to vanquish it. Oh, he's a little too late. Now they catch him out with the duress and the avalanche, and rest in peace, Cuss. It was a desperation play, but... Usually a good point, if you're going to go for an overwall steal, is usually about... Uh, 2,500 to 3,000 is usually a good threshold to wait for, but I think Cus went in a little too early. The Sakari burst was also really deceptive because uh, Sakari E, you know, is like another vanquish on your team. So that might have burst down the peril a lot faster than you thought. Yeah, and this game is pretty much all but over now. With Cus dead and his ult down, and... With another Parasite for Bob, I don't know what SG can do here. Unless SG can get off a good ultimate here uh, and get Bob caught in Guardian ability, I think the game is pretty much over for SG. They Bob won't end it right now. A history of throwing against SG though, because they get impatient and go for really crazy plays. So I hope they continue to take their measured approach in this game and just close it out. Yeah, they've been very, very controlled uh, and, and played with very, very good discipline for the most part in this game up until this point. We'd like to see them continue that trend and, and systematically finish this game here. They are in a very strong position. It's very difficult for them to lose, but, you know, if they misstep in this Guardian and get themselves aced, it could easily swing the favor back in SG. Better. 
Yeah, SG's one chance there was an overstay from Bob, and it did not happen. And look at Tulsa's items. Oh my god, that is just disgusting. Not even 30 minutes in. Almost he's just going to be shredding. CS. Yeah, he's just going to be shredding whoever he hits. It doesn't matter if it's a tank or what. Short one. Yeah, Tulsa's almost got 10 CS per minute. He's got the full mastery build. So he's just gonna be hitting like a truck on anybody, at anybody on SG right now. I don't think anybody on that team has enough like defensive items to really deal with it. I mean, Cus is, looks inc incredibly squishy when you compare him to Tulse right now. That's also one disadvantage of running this double squishy mage comp. Like, yeah, tactician mages are really great for that dress proc, but when you have a fed AD, those two tacticians are just complete food for the AD because he's going to end up, you know, 3-4 shotting them. Yeah, and you can see that the tanks on SG are trying to build armor. Cus has Resilience, he has Vengeance, Resolve, Ambition. Acids has Glory and Ambition, but that's not going to be nearly enough against all of Tulsa's damage. <laughs> And Tulse being so careful, too. Firing his E into that bush. Bob is not taking any chances. Take a look. Cus trying to get in there with a bolt. Stun anyone underneath that binding and allow the duresses to help lock them down. But Bob... Continuing to show incredible restraint in this game. That's got to be the the theme of this game so far is just the the self control of all of the members of BOB to not anyone you know get that bloodlust and put themselves out of position chasing something down or or trying to force something that isn't there. They're just being very very nicely approached. And now we have another big fight happening out here. The beautiful finale locks up two members of SG. Meanwhile, Scrag with damnation doing work on the back line. The rest of uh, BOB. Finishes the front line of SG, and now they're in the base. They take out, or they don't take out Ronan and Dibs. They force them back to the Locust, where they're going to try and hold off, but I don't think they can do much. This game's going to go to Bob. Wow. What a game from Bob. Just a masterful performance against the team that's been giving them all kinds of trouble recently. GG, yeah. Bob the takes game one. Really, really impressive play from them, and it can't be overstated, the fact that they never overstepped their bounds. They knew how far they wanted to push